All right, welcome back to Decryptotech. Today in our labs, we're gonna we have something a little bit different, um, not 100% different or out of the ordinary, but something just unusual. Normally, when we test network attached storage devices, we're looking at them from a standpoint of the home office or the small office, something a little bit bigger. We've looked at the DS1513, uh, the DS1512, the MX513, all of those devices that would fit comfortably into a, uh, an office. Today we're going to be looking at something that's more of a consumer grade product, but it's still a great product, um, and it's from Synology of course, and that is their uh, DS214SC2200. Now the 2200 at the end of the uh, name actually signifies that they comes pre-configured with two two terabyte drives, so a total of four terabytes raw storage. But then, of course, once you set it up in a preferred configuration, which is RAID one, you're going to have about two tera, you know, less than two terabytes of full storage, um, but or usable storage, I should say. But still, that's a pretty good device when you're looking at something like a home unit. Um, there is the DS two fourteen SE that comes diskless, so you can put whatever you want in there. You can put four terabyte drives in there, and the six terabyte drives that are coming out, you know, just starting to hit the market now and you can pretty much expand the storage as far as you want. There's also some options for adding in extra USB uh, you know, attached storage devices uh, as there are with 99% of the network attached storage devices out there. So you can really expand the storage and sort of build yourself a little home cloud station, which is what this product is marketed at. All right, so you've seen the box. Synology boxes are not known for their uh, extremes of color and style but that's okay because you really don't need to know a whole lot and you really don't need to put a whole lot into the box so we're just going to go ahead and move that out of the way and we'll focus on what you guys really want to know about and that's going to be the NAS now one of the things that we've noticed with a lot of network attached storage devices especially when they come with discs inside of them is how secure are they when they're in shipping so that's why we left the foam on here we wanted to give you a good indication of what this looks like and of course this box down here has all of your accessories when this is sitting inside the box it's underneath it, so it really does create a nice little cocoon that will protect your NAS from bumps or bruises. Uh, you know, we all know FedEx, UPS, every single carrier out there is more than capable of destroying something like this. But for the most part, the common items you'd run into in shipping are not going to tear this apart. All right, we'll go ahead and pull this out, toss these aside, and of course to make sure that things are not scratched up, you have a nice... Uh, thick foam paper that's wrapped around it. But before we dive into the NAS and our usual teardown, we're going to take a look at the accessories that come in there. All right, with a network attached storage device, there's really not a whole lot that you want. You have your quick start guide, which is pretty much nothing more than telling you, plug this in, put it on your network, and then go to this, um, this website address, download the latest version of the Disk Station Manager software, and uh, or excuse me, Disk Station Manager Utility, so it's going to allow you to actually find this on your network and configure it properly. It's also got a little bit of information about warranty. Inside there you have your power supply. This is going to be a, a common mobile type. Uh, you'd see this with a laptop. So all of your power supply is going to be external. You have the cord, well you have the cord and then of course you have a net single network cable. So that's everything that's inside the utility box. We're going to go ahead and peel the wrapper off here. And we're going to take a look at what's inside the actual uh, DS214 uh, SE. In our case, the 2200. So let's detach all of this and we'll be right back. Okay, we've got the outer wrapper off, so now we're going to take a look at the NAS itself on the outside. Of course, most of your Synology NASs have a Synology logo in the side. This also acts as an intake vent for the fan that's on the back. Air will pull in here and come through this one, unlike the uh, some of the other ones that we've looked at is going to be an all plastic construction on the outside. Uh, the front's going to be very business like. It's still kind of stylish. It is a white product, so it doesn't look too bad sitting up on your shelf. Of course, you have your power um, LEDs, you have status switches on, LAN, and your disk uh, indicators to let you know that your disks are running correctly. And then, of course, you have a power LED that's down here on the power button at the bottom. You have your uh, model number along the bottom, and then, of course, Synology along this side. Let's flip it around to the back. You have a single one gigabit network connection, two USB ports, and of course your uh, tip, typical uh, Synology fan in the back. So that's going to blow air out the back, which will pull in along the sides to keep everything cool. On the bottom, you do have some extra venting to pull some air in from the bottom, and of course you have some pretty thick rubber feet to help keep this stable on your desk. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and pop the two screws off of the back here, which will allow us to take the side case cover off, and we're going to take a look at what's inside. Okay, so we have the screws out from the back, and the one thing you're going to look at is you'll look at the bottom here, and you'll see that there is a, a little sign here that says open and close. So what you're going to do is you're going to push that, and then that's going to allow this to come off. And here's what we have inside. Now in our case, the, uh, the SE2200 uh, actually has two, two terabyte Western Digital uh, green disks in here, so that's going to be good for uh, pretty much performance uh, and also for power saving. So this really is aimed, you know, product that's aimed at the home. So it's not going to be your upper level. You're not going to see red drives in here or anything major, uh, you know, like some of the red SE or some of the blacks that are going to give you that extreme performance or even some of the Seagate, um, let's say Constellation SE drives that you might see in here. These are going to be real home quality drives. They're good drives, so they're going to give you the best kind of blend of power and performance. You get some power savings that are going to be put into these as well as you're going to get the storage, but they're just not going to burn up the, you know, the benchmarks as it were. All right, so we're going to go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the hard drive cage here, which comes off by four screws, two on either side. Once we get that removed, we'll go ahead and, and pull the whole motherboard tray out. We'll take a look at that. Okay, something we want to point out here real quick when we remove this drive cage is that the first SATA drive actually plugs into a SATA connector that's mounted directly on the board. That doesn't come off, but there's also a riser card, which you can see right here, that is responsible for the back plane for the top SATA drive. So you want to be careful that when you do remove this, if you choose to, you slide it forward and then you lift it up. But make sure you only slide it forward enough to clear the power and the data connector there and then lift it straight up so that you don't damage the, uh, the riser connector here. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the four uh, screws out and we're going to lift the whole motherboard plate. This should remove the entire thing, including the, uh, the fan. So we'll flip this over, show you what's on the board there, and we'll uh, start breaking some other pieces of it down. All right, we've got the rest of it disconnected. Now, one thing we want to point out here, unlike some of the other Synology products, the fan here is actually mounted by um, plastic pin mounts that are going to push in. You can still replace the fan fairly easily, but you just got to be careful when you find that when you put the new one in there. These are actual rubber grommets, so you would pop these off. You can see that here. Pop these off, and then, of course, the fan's going to come off, and just make sure that you pop these back on. Still pretty simple to, to do. But it can also be a pain if you lose one of those grommets and getting everything mounted back on there. But let's take a look at the, uh, the motherboard. It does have a Marvel Armada 370 CPU. It's running at 800 megahertz. And of course, the memory is going to be mounted onto the board. There's not a whole lot that you can configure like we've seen on the, the DS1513 and DS1512. Again, this is meant more for uh, consumers. This is going to be a consumer uh, class cloud device. I guess like a, a personal or a home cloud. Motherboard is very simple. Um, it is good quality. You have solid capacitors. Um, the tracing layout looks very clean from what we can see here. You have, of course have a uh, uh, battery in here to keep your, your firmware set up so you're not going to lose the, the BIOS that's underlying the motherboard and everything will be kept good if you unplug this. Flipping around to the back, you of course have your riser for your network card and your uh, or network adapter and your two uh, USB ports. And of course, the power plug for your uh, three-pin fan, which is going to be on the back. So overall, a very clean layout. I mean, nothing really to write home about, but it's still going to be a good quality product, and it's going to have almost everything that you need if you're looking to set up a cloud, you know, station from your home. The only thing that it's not going to provide for you is going to be, of course, the network connectivity, and uh, you know, meaning a uh, something like a router or a switch in place for you to connect into, and of course, the internet. But it's going to have everything else built into it that you need. And again, one of the reasons we chose the 2200 is that this is going to give you an example of what you'll get straight from the factory. It's not introducing any parts or components from us. Um, for example, if we had use Seagate drives, this is what you'll get when you purchase this product. Uh, this is the reason we went with the uh, 2200 over just the plain SE. So if you were to pick this up, which it's, right now it's about $400. I believe it's three, you're just under $390 at uh, most of your online e-tailers. This is what you're going to get coming straight out of the package. So it's a good build. It's a good package setup here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this back together. We're going to get plugged in, configured, and we're going to check out everything that you get inside, including the performance, the disk station manager, and all the functions and features that Synology provides you in this, in this little box. 
as always, thank you for uh, watching. If you like this video, be sure to click on the like button and make sure you share it with your friends. As always, check back with us, uh, you know, subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you. Thank you.